Heidi ho and welcome back, Snackaroos. Today we are diving into the heart-pounding world of Halloween Horror Nights Orlando. I'll answer your questions as far as how much it costs, how much Express is, what the food tastes like, how long the lines are, and whether or not it's worth it. But wait, we have something extra terrifying in store for you. Not only will we explore the spectacular haunted houses, but we'll also tantalize our taste buds with the delicious, fright-filled food offerings. So grab your blanket and some snacks, and let's get started. So as we approach the entrance to Universal Studios, we can see projected on the ground and on the gate itself, many scary symbols for your entertainment. The Universal Studios Park closes at 5 p.m. each day during this event, and the Halloween Horror Nights event starts at 6.30 p.m. Use of the gates open at 6 p.m. to kind of get people lined up. HHN closes at 2 a.m. Here we see the beautiful sign of Halloween Horror Nights and the beautiful sunset. Everything is cast in a red light like blood, so you know it's like, you know, scary. Just before the main gate of the park, you have to go to your ticket area to get your ticket scanned to make sure you're not actually sneaking in. Now my base ticket to just get in with nothing else was $103.99. That doesn't include anything extra. After you come out of the ticket area, you come to this nice signed area where you officially enter Halloween Horror Nights. Look at that smoke. Oh, what's all scary? Oh look, there's more satanic writing. Then you run to the first of the scare actors, such as this crazy white-haired girl with a baseball bat. Come over here. Over here, girl with a baseball bat. Come on. Try and get me. Ow! Don't you try to get me. Anyway. I then kept walking and came across this demonic figure who tried to do a little wiggle dance for me. I then came to my first haunted house area, which was called Blood Moon Dark Offerings. Now there were eight haunted houses, three scare zones, a terror tram, and three shows. I decided in order to see everything in one night, I should buy the Halloween Horror Nights Express Pass. That was $189.99. The Express Pass lines were still 10 to 15 minutes long, Plus, you need time to eat and go to the bathroom. Even with the Express Pass, you might barely get a chance to see everything here. I would highly recommend getting the Express Pass if you can afford it, especially for coming for one night only, like I was. Now let's walk through and look at Blood Moon Dark Offerings. So here is the separate lane to the Halloween Horror Knife Express Blood Moon Offerings. On the right is the regular lane. It's important to know that you have to walk around large studio buildings that might take five minutes or more to get around. The express line goes all the way around to the beginning, so it's a long walk. Here's the entrance to one of the hangars. You can see that's the regular crowd. And I have to walk all the way around them to get to the front of the line, so please make sure you wear some really good shoes. This is also your warning there'll be flashing strobe light effects and gross and gory effects. If you don't like that, please watch another video in my list. Now let me describe this walkthrough to you. In this house, a bunch of colonial people begin to worship the Blood Moon. When the Blood Moon rises, they take it as a sign to kill everybody that's not part of their cult. This house had a lot of gross, bloody, and murderous scenes to it. Oh, I want my mommy. This was pretty scary and grotesque, so I think I'm gonna give this 8 daggers out of 10. Well, 
After all that, I decided to mosey on to the next section of the park, where I found two more haunted houses. The next haunted house that I found was called Yeti Campground Kills. The story of this haunted house is there's a bunch of summer camp counselors out in the woods who suddenly got killed by yetis. I'm going to show you the haunted houses that I went to in order, but I'm going to show you my favorite one at the end. So please watch this video until the end. Now let's walk through this and see what happened. Oh, oh, don't you try to get me, ew, ew. Ow, gave her a left hawk. I don't, I don't know, where is he? Oh dear, that sounded really juicy. Dirty! Dirty birdy! Oh! This was a really fun haunted house. It was scary, there were lots of jump scares, but it was also kind of funny. There were many yetis that jumped out and tried to scare me and tried to tear me apart. And there was also a really funny scene where there was a stuffed bear that tried to eat me. This was scary and silly, and I'm gonna give this 8 knives out of 10. Oh, is that silly. The next haunted house in an area was called Dueling Dragons Choose Thy Fate. And this was a unique haunted house that allowed you to choose a different ending. The premise of this haunted house is that there are fire wizards and ice wizards dueling with dragons. And at the end, you choose to go down one path with the fire wizards or with the ice wizards. After this haunted house, I also went and tried some of the scary food, so please stay tuned for that. So let's walk through this and see what happens. I once again had to walk past the beautiful satanic display of HHN 32, past this long walkway in theater, and back behind one of the studio buildings. And you can see this is the radar line for multiple haunted houses. And I am standing in the express line. Wow, this is beautiful. Ow! Oh. Got him good. Oh. Fight lizard. Oh, he's so magical. Oh, two of them. Oh, where am I? I think the devil lives here. It is that a big arm? Oh, they're trying to get me. Oh my god. This was a very creative and beautiful haunted house, one of the nicest ones there. There were lots of dragons breathing smoke and ice, and lots of fire wizards. At the end, you choose to go down the path of ice or fire. The sets were good, the costumes were good, but it's not as scary as the other houses. The wizards were kind of all the same, but it was still a fun haunted house to see. So I'm going to give this 8.5 knives out of 10. Next I decided it was snickety snack time, and I walked over to this concession stand to see what they offered. At this concession stand, they offered a couple things I wanted to try. First was Dr. Oddfellow's Karn Evil Dog, which I tried. And later I tried the Sour Apple Funnel Fries. 
So let's take a look at Dr. Evil's Carn Evil Hot Dog. So this is Dr. Oddfellow's Carn Evil Dog. And it consists of a confetti sprinkles bun. There are confetti sprinkles melted in the bun. Kool-Aid flavored pickles, bubblegum mustard, and potato sticks. And that was 1049. Now let's give this monstrosity a taste. Let's see what this is all about. Mmm. This is a really good, delicious, meaty hot dog. The bun is really good with a hint of sweetness from the sprinkles. I love the potato sticks, and that's a good salty addition. The bubblegum mustard does work here. So it's regular mustard with a sweet bubblegum, which is very subtle. And it just kind of tastes like a subtle pickled flavor. There are also Kool-Aid pickles on this, and it all works together. I'm going to give this... 8.5 daggers out of 10. This is very creative, very fun, and it was very delicious, and all these flavors work together. Now on to my next haunted house. Next I came across the Scare Zone, which was Vamp 69 Summer of Blood Scare Zone. And this is where Dr. Oddfellow had unleashed a bunch of vampires that just happened to be from the 60s. So let's see what happens. Oh, with all that screaming. Ow! Don't you try to bite me. Don't smack people. I guess she's hungry. There's a good hot dog around the corner. Boogie down, yeah! Rudy. Hey, what's shaking, Jam Brady? Oh, he's eating. Oh, he's eating a dead person with a bong in his head. Oh, you dirty thing. What's this? A music fest bus with people stabbing each other. Well, that's nice. More prancing about and dancing. Ow! Oh! Put that head down. Uh, what's cooking, Mama? I'm hungry. Ow! Oh, she don't like that. What's it? Ew. Ew, that is gross. No, I don't want that. What's this, a hippie van? The lighting in here was beautiful. I really liked it. All right. Boogie down. All right, yeah. Snap your fingers, that's good. Oh, well, this guy... Oh, no. I don't... No, I don't want that. Well, hello. That's a nice foot you have. What's happening here? A nice Volkswagen Beetle. And there is a crazy man with an iron skillet. Oh! to the love bus. Oh, he don't like that. He don't like me having on camera. Get her. Throw that meat at her. Wait, wait, put that head down. What are you doing? More print a sample of what? Now I don't want no sample of fingers. Oh, I think he was more scary than the scare actors. This was a lot of fun walking through here, and I'm gonna give this eight knives out of ten. Now let's move on to our next haunt. I then walked through the park and found more of these beautiful Halloween projections on the buildings. And then came to the darkest deal. The theme of the darkest deal is the legend of Delta Blues musician Robert Johnson. 
who is said to have sold his soul to the devil in exchange for musical talent and fame. So let's walk through and see what he did. So this was another long walk through a large crowd, but once again I had express. So the wait for this ride wasn't too bad. Unlike the other haunts, it had a really nice built facade, it looked like a set. It wasn't just an empty hangar that you walked into. So walking into Bob's Lounge, we finally see the protagonist of the story, which is this man who wants to sell his soul to the devil in order to get talent to play jazz. Oh look, it's the devil! Oh. oh, don't try to get me. Oh, oh, what is this? Some kind of you're not the first. Scary. Put your pajamas on and go back to bed. It's the devil again. And there he is. And the devil is going to get him. Okay. This may be an unpopular opinion. The Darkest Deal was not my favorite haunted house. The jazz singer sold a soul to the devil to play jazz. It wasn't as scary as the other houses. It wasn't as long as the other houses. It did have a nice facade, but I really didn't think this grabbed my attention the way the other ones did. I'm going to give this 7.5 knives out of 10. Let me know which one is your favorite haunted house by commenting below. My favorite haunted house will be up at the end. Now let's try some more scary snacks. So I went back again to that same concession stand, but this time I tried the Sour Apple Pie Funnel Fries. Now let's look at the menu, shall we? The Sour Apple Funnel Fries consisted of sour sugar seasoned funnel fries like funnel cake, topped with apple pie filling, sour apple ice cream, and streusel. Let's give this a taste. Oh, this looks yummy. Get a little bit of everything. Mmm. Mmm. This is absolutely wonderful. It's warm, delicious apple cinnamon fries with gooey apples and delicious soft tasting ice cream on top. This is the best thing I had all night and I'm gonna give this 10 out of 10 knives. I absolutely love it and I would highly recommend getting this above everything else that you try. Now let's look at some of the other haunts and I'm also gonna show you my favorite haunt of the evening. So I came to this crossroad sign showing me other haunts like Chucky and Nightmare Fuel even with the express pass, I couldn't get to all of it. This next haunt was a walkthrough and it was Shipyard 32, Whores Unhinged, San Francisco. Uh oh. It's Nosferatu in a cage. Maybe they're shipping him off to the lunchroom. I thought this was really nice, the makeup looked good. Ow. Try to get me. N no. I don't like that Dollar Tree mask. Ow. There he comes. Wolfman over here.
And now we have a giant bat. Go ahead, flap your wings like you don't care. Go ahead, okay. And now we are back to the beautiful walkway with this demonatrix doing a little dance for me. This was a really nice walkthrough. I liked the Nosferatu, and I'm going to give this 8 nights out of 10. Now on to our next haunted house, and we're getting closer to my final haunted house, which is my favorite. The theme of Universal Monsters Unmasked is basically all the Universal Monsters with their face ripped off. So let's take a look. I'm sorry to say that the first thing I'm going to have to point out was that this walk to this haunted house was a long ass walk. Don't tell my mom I said that. My feet are still hurting today. Now let's go inside and see if it's worth it. This is really nice scenery. That was cool. Rip his face off. Go ahead. See if I care. She's choking on something. Look at that. Like, oh, oh, are you dirty? Oh, I didn't see that coming. Ew, what's happening? Ew, what? This is scary. The scenery of these sets in here looks really beautiful. The wolf man. And it, oh, he got him. He's eating slime now, I guess. Oh no. Oh, you dirty, th you are dirty. I was that dirty. There was nice scenery and some nice sets in here, but I thought this was kind of played out. It was kind of boring. I didn't like the Phantom of the Opera bit. I didn't really care if they took their masks off. I just wasn't that excited about this. It got a little better towards the end, but after that long walk, I wanted to see something really good, and it was kind of basic. So I'm going to give this 7 out of 10 knives. Now let's move on to our next haunt. On my way to the final haunts, I decided to pick up this Little Boo Light Up Necklace for 20 bucks. It really helped light my way when I was in the haunted houses. Now on to the final haunted house for views and my final scary meal. The next to the last haunt that I saw was The Exorcist Believer based on the new movie that's coming out in October. I did not see the movie so I really couldn't compare it, but this was the second to the last haunted house I went through. The last haunted house I'm going to show you was my favorite haunted house and I felt it was the scariest. So let's do this walkthrough. Okay. Look at all that junk. Oh, it's the devil. Oh. Oh my. This looks pretty nice. Uh. Who are they? Angela? Oh, it's the devil again. There it is. Oh, oh, that's neat out.
there's some interesting effects in this house. Oh, get away from me. Uh oh. Oh. Mm, that don't look good. Harry, oh, it's the devil again. No. Uh oh. Oh, you are dirty. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh uh, uh oh. Now. Now. Barfing on the ceiling. Oh. Oh, that's me. Oh. This was a really nice house. It was scary and there were some really nice and neat effects in it. I thought this was a good haunted house and I'm probably going to give this 8.5 knives out of 10. Now let's move on to my final snack and my final haunted house review. For my final scary snack I went over to Chucky's Killer Treats. I will tell you I did not get a chance to go into the Chucky haunted house as I was told it wasn't that good. So I decided to use my time for better haunted houses. Now let's look at the menu. So looking at the Killer Treats menu, we had the fried till the end chicken, and we had Chucky's Pop Dead Popcorn. I thought it'd be more interesting to try the chicken, so let's give it a closer look. Getting a closer look at this, the fried till the end chicken consists of fried popcorn chicken tossed in Nashville hot sauce, drizzled in ranch, and topped with scallions and chili threads. And that was $9.99. So let's give this hot treat a taste. I will say you get a lot of chicken balls in here for your money. Look at that. Mmm, oh. Oh, this is hot. This is definitely Nashville hot chicken. It's hot and it stings, plus there's chili strings in it. It's very good. It has good barbecue sauce. The ranch is good, but I wish there was more ranch to go throughout this entire bucket. The chili strings are good, but they make it hot and spicy and oh, uh oh, I dropped my balls. This is a really good dish. I was very happy with it. You get a lot of food. So I'm going to give this eight and a half knives out of ten. Now on to my final haunted house, and the haunted house that I thought was the scariest and the most creative. Sit that thing up so it doesn't fall over. Anyway, let's move on. So my favorite and most creative haunted house that I chose was Dr. Oddfell's Twisted Origins. This is a bizarre circus tent filled with demonic, grotesque, and deformed figures created by Dr. Oddfell to perform in his bizarre circus. So let's walk through and see what this is all about. So here is the Dr. Oddfell's Express Marathon Run. Maybe he should change his name to Dr. Dirty Fellow. Anyway, while standing in line I saw this troop of black hooded evil people. More walking and walking. And this is Dr. Oddfellow's tent. And here are the evil people again. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh, like who? Oh my gosh. I don't like clowns. This scene coming up scared the crap out of me. Oh gosh. 
that really scared me. It was different when you're there. Your soul is mine. No, it's not. Don't you try to eat me. You saber tooth thing. Quack. Ew, ew. Oozies. Ew. Go away, bozo. So I thought this was really interesting. They scared me a lot. There was a lot of grotesque images, a lot of interesting images. There were neat sound effects that helped with the idea that darts were being flown past you. The part where the clown got his head ripped off, jumped forward, then turned and started chasing after me was really scary. I think I'm going to give this, putting everything together, 9.5 guides out of 10. So I made my way back to the dark zodiac scare zone at the entrance where they have all the, you know, satanic symbols and everything. With my express pass, I was able to see seven haunted houses, three scare zones, plus I also went to Harry Potter World and saw the Death Eater show and then came back out into Universal Studios. And I'll have another video on the Death Eater soon, so please look out for that. There's more fun Halloween content in my Halloween Happenings playlist, so please check that out. Plus, I also have Halloween recipes. Hit that like and subscribe button so I can bring you more fun, entertaining, and tasty content. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye, and have a happy Halloween.